Blender has many settings, tools and menus which are hidden and you discover how to use them or how to set them up basically by using Blender on a daily basis. So through modeling, etc. So now in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you 10 tips and tricks and 10 hidden settings for Blender that will improve your modeling game instantly. Let's go. In order to learn about all these intricacies and, you know, hidden settings and tools and ways of doing things in Blender to get stuff done correctly, it takes time and effort. You need to practice and you need to do things on a daily basis in order to, you know, gain that knowledge. But there is a shortcut to this and the shortcut basically is very simple. It's a well-structured course that will get you there in a matter of days. And that's exactly what Hard Surface Accelerator course will do for you. It will deliver you all that knowledge within two weeks. So if you're new to Blender or you're struggling with using Blender or you're even intermediate Blender user, then this course is fantastic for you especially if you are into hard surface modeling it will teach you not just about all the menus and tools and all the tips and tricks and settings that you need to know of but also the entire modeling process starting from the cube ending with the final render you can post on your portfolio so you will learn about blockouts detailing design principles about how to texture render set lighting camera angles and all that the course is really well structured and very well designed so click the link in the video description and grab the course and if you do click on the link in the video description you're gonna get 50 percent off for good luck so it's a fantastic deal as well now let's get back to our video and the first tool we're gonna talk about is gonna be clip start so this one you may know of but there's one tiny detail that you may not be aware of so pay attention First of all, what you want to do is you want to open end panel and go to view and clip start is in here. Now, by default, Blender clip start is set to 0.1, which is 10 centimeters. So if you're going to zoom in closely on a cube, which is two meters by two meters, you will see that we're going to have this problem. You're going to be able to see inside of the cube. And if you want to, you know, check something in this corner, right? You can't do that because this whole corner disappears. So what you want to do, you want to decrease this value to something smaller, like for example, one centimeter, and then you can zoom in closer. And if you want to zoom in even closer, you know what to do. You simply need to adjust this value to something lower, right? So if I wanted to zoom in really close, I'm going to simply add one more zero here to go really low. So now it's one millimeter, right? Now, there's one thing that you may not know of, like I said, if you set clip start to such a low value and you're going to go to cycles render view and you're going to have a complex model and at certain scale and you're going to have a lot of elements, possibly some decals, etc. You may start seeing some really nasty artifacts, weird shading, kind of like zigzaggy lines and crazy stuff going on on your model. You're going to be wondering what the hell is happening. Well, what's happening is the clip start value. Okay, when this happens to you, simply change the value back to 0.1 and everything is going to be peachy. Okay, so that's my tip for you on clip start. Now, next one's going to be really simple. Next one's going to be undo steps. When you open Blender for the first time and you go to edit and preferences and you're going to go to system, you will see that your undo steps is going to be by default at 32. So if you want to you know, go back in time in history and undo something, you're going to be limited to 32 steps. That's not many steps. What you want to do is you want to just type any number here and 256 is max. So you want to set it to maximum number of undo steps because you want to have this, you know, this freedom of going back as far as possible uh, without loading the previous uh, save file, okay? So that's what I would suggest. And it's, you know, this is something I set up every time I install new Blender. And then obviously you need to save preferences. Next tip I'm going to give you is for mirroring. Now mirror in Blender is freaking annoying and I never use it. I use always hard up's mirror. However, by default, mirror in Blender is going to mirror stuff across the origin point. Origin point is something that's located in the middle of your object by default, like for example, this dot here in the middle that's the origin point of this cube so if i'm going to move my origin point let's say to this face shift s or even better let me create a, a loop here and i'm going to move it to the loop with machine tools add-on so i'm going to move it to edge which means you know the uh, origin point shifted now to the edge so now if i'm going to add a mirror to it so go to uh, generate and add a mirror you'll see that my mirror what it will do where is this thing here it will mirror 
uh, this cube across this origin point. And if I move this origin point back to geometry, you see, it shifted back. So remember that mirror always works by default, works based off of the origin point, and you need to be very aware where this point is located, okay? So just remember about that. And the reason why this cube is still distorted, because now I have additional edge on this cube here, and this distorts the, uh, the positioning of the origin point. If I'm going to dissolve this edge, and I'm going to reset the origin point, See, now it reset back to a cube. So you got to be very aware where you place this point, how much geometry you have in your, in your model, and how this geometry is spaced. Because if you're going to set the origin point in object view, this will, uh, the Blender will take into consideration all the geometry surrounding or, or you know, well, surrounding the origin point or basically on that model. So for instance, if I'm going to cut this cube with a, with, with a Boolean, right? Well, it's mirror right now. Let me just remove this mirror. There we go. If I'm going to run a boolean here and apply this, right, and then I'm going to set origin point one more time, shift S, and to geometry, you see the origin point shifted. Why it shifted? Because now it's biased to the right hand side because there is simply more geometry in here. So you need to be very, you know, sort of conscious of how you set this origin point, where you place it, because again, when you're going to be running mirror later on, uh, on this mesh, you know, a weird things gonna be happening because again, it's based off of the origin point. Unless you're using add-ons like Hardops and Box Cutter, which will allow you to set the pivot point to something else. But basically, in uh, in Vanilla Blender, the pivot point by default is an origin point. You can obviously um, set this to an object. But by default, again, it's an origin point. Next tip I'm going to give you is going to be on solvers for booleans. Now, what's a solver, right? Well, let me show you. So if I'm going to grab this cube here and scale it, right? And in fact, let me just duplicate this and uh, move it here. So it's on the same axis. And I'm going to scale it like that. Now, if I'm going to grab this cube and, you know, run a difference boolean, you see even hard ups and box cutter cannot cope because by default, the solver for this boolean is set to fast, which means when you have two surfaces on the same level, a blender will not know which one should be on top and is unable to perform the operation. So what you need to do is go here to boolean and you need to change the solver to exact in order to uh, fix the problem. So when your boolean doesn't work, try this and it might just work. Now, do not set booleans to exact um, permanently as in like don't run all the booleans with exact setting because it's a little bit more heavy in terms of performance and you don't really need exact booleans on every single mesh and sometimes in fact fast booleans gonna work better than exact next tip is super simple when you're gonna be rendering something especially in cycles make sure you're gonna switch from cpu to gpu by default this is set to cpu and if you're going to render something um, using the CPU, it's going to be extremely slow. doesn't matter how fast your CPU is, GPU is always going to be faster, okay? Another thing is that when you're going to be setting sampling, by default, max samples here are set to 4096 or something, which is crazy. Set it to 300 and you're good to go. That's all really you need to set and your render is going to be nice and smooth, okay? Another tip that's really important is going to be cavity. I'm talking about this in multiple videos and it's a really important setting. It's very simple but very powerful. You want to set it up in here. By default, Blender doesn't have this on and you can see that some edges cannot be even, you know, recognized. You, at this angle, you cannot tell where this face ends and where it begins. It's really difficult to model like this because you do not see the outline of the model. You want to see the outline of the model in order to be able to see the design language, right, at a glance. So what you want to do is you want to go here and turn the cavity on. Default settings are fine. All you want is that nice, rich, kind of like a, you know, emulation of a, of a blender bevel, like a very tiny bevel, which is going to help you tremendously by highlighting all the edges and telling you where, you know, the, the, uh, the hard edges are. And it's going to create a kind of like a nice division between surfaces, especially when they break. So this is really helpful for modeling. And I wouldn't fiddle with any of these settings by default, they're fine. Next thing that's really irritating when you start Blender um, is the auto perspective. So if you go here to edit and preferences, and I think it's under in 
navigation. And then by default, Blender is set like this. This is terrible. And I tell you why. The auto perspective is extremely annoying because when you switch to side view, you see Blender flips into orthographic view. And when you move out of orthographic view, it switches to perspective. I don't want that. Another problem with these settings, and it's just a side tip, is this one. Orbit around selection is turned off and depth is turned off. The depth is really simple to explain. If I'm going to try to scroll on this object, eventually I can't scroll any closer. And you see, I'm kind of stuck like in the mud, right? So you want to turn it down in order to be able to scroll really close onto your model. So that's one. Second thing is this, um, this setting here. It's going to be orbit around selection. When you're going to be orbiting around this cube, you know, every, everything may seem fine. But if you're going to duplicate it and select this cube and you want to orbit around this one, you can't. It's really, you know, clunky and sort of unintuitive. So what you want to do is you want to flip all these around, okay? You want to turn off this rubbish. You want to turn that on and this on and save preferences, right? And then you can, you know, orbit around selection, which is really important, too. You can zoom in really closely, very fast. And three, you don't have this auto perspective rubbish, right? Which is really irritating. You want to be able to switch into perspective and orthographic. You want to flip between them manually by pressing five on a numpad. And that's what I would recommend. And next one in terms of settings is going to be a spacebar. By default, spacebar is set to set to play animation. So if you're going to go to... Uh, key bindings came up here this one by default when you actually first time open blender you're gonna be asked if you want to change any settings loading settings from previous blender that's where you can change this thing but you can also change it later in preferences so the play button is very dangerous because spacebar is a very large key it's easy to press it by mistake and if you have it set to play what's going to happen is you're going to be playing animation and this could conflict with add-ons. For example, Hardops mirror will not work. Watch this. With Hardops, the gizmo for the mirror will not be showing. So I'm going to play the animation, right? And you cannot see that it's playing. It's somewhere in a corner. It's really easy to miss. And you press Alt-X and where is my gizmo for the mirror? I can't see it, right? You'll think Hardops is bugged. No, it isn't. You're simply playing an animation. Now if I press Alt-X, it's working. So you see, that's a problem. So what you want to do, you want to set it to search. Because, you know, especially when you're a new user, you're going to be searching for new tools, key bindings, whatever. When you press spacebar, it's going to basically pop the search window, which is much more convenient. And you could set the play button of a play animation to F3, which is basically by default, uh, originally in Blender, a search function. So just flip them around and you're going to be good to go. Next tip is going to be about UI. See, my UI is set like this, now I want to keep it like that. So, for example, when I'm checking someone's work in our community, uh, when I'm running the Q&A calls, or when I'm opening someone else's file in my Blender, usually when you drag and drop a file, it's going to override your UI. So, it's going to load the UI from their file into your Blender. But if you do not want this to happen, it's really easy. What you want to do is you want to go to Open, and you want to click on this cogwheel and you want to uncheck this load UI. And when you do that, you will load their file, right? And you select the blend file and you load it, open, right? You will load their file without their UI. So it's gonna, you're going to load the model, the textures, whatever is included, but without the UI. So this is a really cool tip. And, you know, I remember it was really annoying for me when I was drag and dropping files from other people. And it was overwriting my UI and, you know, I was confused because everything was different and it was just irritating to work in a file like that. You want to keep your UI because that's how you used to work and it's, you know, it's really convenient. So when you load in someone else's file, that's how you do it. Now, last tip is going to be very simple. Use add-ons. And let me show you a very quick example, okay? And I don't even mean hard-ups and box cutter. I mean add-ons in general. It could be free, could be paid. I don't care. Use add-ons. Because vanilla blender is a you know is a is a disaster. So here let let me show you how many steps do you need to perform in order to create a boolean. You need to shift D and you know, duplicate the cube, and then you need to select the cube you want a boolean. You want to go here and you want to go to generate and you want to find boolean. Then you want to click on this selector and select the cube you want to boolean with. But we're not done yet because now you cannot see whether this boolean is working or not. So if I press Alt Z, you can see it's working, but I can't see anything because this is solid mesh. So what I need to do is I need to change it to, you know, to wire. So you want to go to, uh, 
here to this uh, um, whatever it's called object data and you want to change uh, the display uh, from uh, you know textured to wire and now you can actually see that now if you were using add-ons and I'm I'm just talking about basic blender extensions like bull tool for example so if you're gonna go here to preferences extension and enable the extension called bull tool this one and you wanted to run a boolean I'm going to duplicate it scale it shift select this one control minus done and that's just a very basic you know blender add-on so again use add-ons like power safe hard ops box cutter mesh machine all these add-ons are essential to your workflow because they're going to save you a lot of time and time is money not to mention it's gonna be much easier to create stuff because you're gonna be going with the flow and you will not be stuck you know doing all this technical rubbish and add-ons like hard ops and box cutter are gonna make it even easier especially when you're gonna be adding bevels you know uh, adding uh, multiple booleans mirrors because they're just so robust and have so many fantastic tools that sometimes blender cannot even do okay or takes you know five minutes to perform one thing that just takes one click in, in hard ups which is crazy but that's the truth so don't listen to people who tell you not to use add-ons day one that they just you know crazy use add-ons day one you will love it because again it's going to save you a lot of time and add-ons gonna basically make modeling fun and easy and they're gonna help you get to your destination faster now speaking of getting to your destination faster like i said in the beginning if you want to learn blender hard surface and you want to learn the correct habits and how to properly model in blender how to get into hard surface really easily grab our course the hard surface accelerator is fantastic just in two weeks you're going to be able to master all these things i talked about and way more all the menus all the settings all the tools and the whole hard surface workflow including principles of design so this course will teach you everything on hard surface basics and beyond so click the link in the video description grab the course and enjoy anyway that's it for this video thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one